Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to Best Ball with Bindles. We are here with our co-host, El Coach. Um, we are going to, uh, we don't don't have a, a, a subject tonight uh, uh, as we've gone over a lot of rookies and other stuff, but um, we are going to just chat for a little bit and then hop into a big board draft. So uh, jump in and uh, let's get it started. How's it going, everyone? Happy Tuesday night. GM, GM, Fantasy Dog. We got Vaporware in here. We got Tyler. We got Pat Joyce. How's it going, everyone? Um, El Coach, happy Tuesday, brother. How are you doing? What's been going on with you? And uh, what do you want to talk about for a little bit? Happy Tuesday, man. Happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like we're we talked about this a little bit before the show, but I feel like we're in that weird lull right before the NFL draft um, in our dynasty leagues. Uh, you can buy pretty much anything you want uh, with uh, high rookie draft picks right now, which is pretty great. It's crazy. <laughs> so, right? yeah, uh, that's fun. We're we're about to like touch that part of the wheel where you know you get to be on the clock and you know set your set your demands for what you want to do with those picks. Um, Rasheed Rice decided the news cycle was quiet enough, and uh, thankfully nobody's hurt. But man, how about that? Yeah, I mean, the more it goes on, it seems like it's not nothing crazy is going to come to it. Especially considering that, like, I feel like way crazier stuff happens and people get like a slap on the wrist. So, I mean, the videos are pretty bad, though. So, I mean, that I think does play an element. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to pretend I'm a lawyer or anything, but everyone that I have seen on Twitter and whatnot has said that doesn't seem like he's going to get. Um, and and of course, I don't have any Rishi Rice shares, literally zero across what? way really? too many wow. leagues. And then I drafted him in the startup we're doing right now. And then like, what, I don't even know if it was the same day or like whatever, like the next morning is when all the Rishi. So like, I, you know, that's just the curse of death is just. Uh, when I start uh, getting shares with you in, in Dynasty, then it's That's all beautiful. Um, how many times in your life do you think you'll get to say it's not that big of a deal when a uh, was it a, a Lambo and a Corvette crash? And it's like, it's not that big of a deal. It's fine. Like, that's still kind of insane to me. Um, but yeah, you know, like it looks like everybody's walking away. So that's uh, that's something. Yeah, scary situation, but uh i'm just glad that yeah looks like nobody was was hurt i think um so yeah and then um so yeah do you want to I, I was just maybe we can just talk about our startup that we were in for a second um before we hop into a draft um do you want to do do you want me to pull up uh your your squad so you can you can uh you can brag a little bit about the uh the ultimate redraft squad <laughs> I mean, it's the both of us. Like, we're both gonna have to just, you know, pump ourselves with these uh, with these picks here, man. These are these are two some heavyweights. Um, I really, my personal challenge was to see how many uh, players from like the top thirty six in underdog underdog ADP I could just nestle into a dynasty team. Um, so far, so good. <laughs> It's pretty Dude. ridiculous. Like, yeah, let's let's start with your team because this is actually insane. Like, I, I I I'm I don't know other than yeah yes Tyler we are about to watch live roster baiting so you better you, oh you yeah cover your eyes. This is um, this is gonna be glorious. So yeah, he started off with you start off with Jefferson. You got Jordan Love as your QB one, and then. I passed on CMC and AJ Brown and Gibbs for one 105, which could come back to bite me in the ass, but I feel like that player, whether it's Drake May or Daniels or neighbors, when we get to like, I can, I gives me the flexibility to trade them if I want to uh, later yeah. on. I just feel like the steam with all those rookies is going to get so crazy that I'll be able to pivot if I do feel like it, or if I, if I can get neighbors or, or may or someone falling, I'll, I'll be pretty happy with that anyway. 
Um, but yeah, so CMC, Jefferson, AJ Brown, Laporta, Nico Collins, and then you followed it up with some some vets to uh, close it out with Amari Cooper, Camara, Sharbs, Hopkins, and then whatever. After this point, it's just kind of a lot of dust. Grab yeah. whoever you want. Yeah. But that's like yeah. that starting lineup is pretty insane. Uh, and I mean, Jordan Love and Goff, obviously, like you're covered off at quarterback. Um, leaves you a little thin, like we were talking about. But uh, what else do you want to, uh, to to vamp about for this? I mean, I'm just really excited for the injuries to settle in uh, for that team in like mid August, and it just completely gets kneecapped. Um, so that's going to feel great. Um, I just I, I I love teams where I can start with Jefferson because I feel like those are some of like my my wildest teams because you can just kind of do whatever you want and people in this draft were more than obliging to just trade all over the place and disregard ADP and draft wherever they wanted like it was pretty great had I known that Matt Stafford would have went in the tenth I could have just held off on Jared Goff but whatever and then there's th then there's your lineup which is equally ridiculous and way more stable yeah so the only thing that i don't i so like last off season i was trading my my 25 or i guess it was my 24 first like to trade up a lot and i haven't been doing that like i i, I will trade my second and third my futures but not really my first because it i have, was in a couple of situations this year where like basically like i couldn't take because I didn't have my first. And so then I was just trying to scrape together a team, um, which is absolutely terrible. Yeah. Uh, so don't really want to get myself into that situation again. Definitely learn the hard way on that. But I did move up from 112 to 13 uh, because this guy took CD Lamb at 101. I, can we talk about this guy first? This whole sequence was, this first round was insane. Um, yeah. And Stroud went like 1 9. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, three wide receivers in the first round. That yeah, was so this, this guy traded up like his his second, third, and fourth. I don't even know what else he traded. He traded his 25 first and his 25 second and 25 third. And he dude, up. he got bailed out so so well with getting Baker Mayfield and, and Cousins. I think he's a little early on both, but it doesn't matter. Like you have CD Lamb 101. Whatever. Dude, I oh. This is just, yeah. So he has Lamb. He took Amon Ra over Chase and Stroud and Burrow and everyone. So I was at that point. I was like, okay. And then he, and then I was jokingly saying because he had a pick at one twelve. I was like, he traded up, and I was like jokingly saying he's gonna take Puka. Like I put Puka in the chat, and then he literally took Puka. Um, and he also was saying that he wanted. He was like, oh man, I was hoping Stroud would fall to me. At 112, I'm like, bro, you had two chances. You yeah. had two chances. Multiple to opportunities. That was um, incredible. So, yeah, that was that was an interesting start to the draft, which I feel like, honestly, yeah, like you said, we have some wild cards in this draft, which I feel like makes it more fun because I think there's some pretty good values. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I traded up to 1-3 for a 25 first and I think like a 13th or something. So, I would happily pay that on top of whatever. I guess it would be Herbert, but even that 25 first on top of Herbert isn't like crazy for Mahomes. Um, no, and, it, and the 101, like that's, <laughs> you got the 101 next, like it's disgusting. Yeah. So then because, because Amon Ra and Puka, which usually go later, I got 101 to fall to me. Then I was up at 3 1. Like I said, I took 105, which I don't know. It's a little bit risky, but I feel like the value insulation for those like, Whatever it's, I'm either getting one of the top three quarterbacks or neighbors or Harrison. So I don't know. I don't, I think, like I said, value wise, uh, I feel pretty good. Although I did kind of regret not taking AJ Brown. I don't know why. I don't have a lot of AJ Brown. So I was just like, uh, maybe I should just take him. Um, but then I was either. like, okay, it was, <laughs> that was the whole get, reason for taking him. So yeah. I want it. Once we get into the season, though, like I feel like neighbors is going to be valued like mid second. And I just don't – not to say A.J. Brown isn't around that, but just whatever. I think I'll be yeah. able to catch more in a trade as well. Um, wrap around, took Tank Dell for 12, almost got Ayuk there. Um, and Pittman both went right before me. But, yeah, like all these receivers usually go like early fourth range or, or late three. So 
that felt pretty good to get Tank Dell there. And then, yeah, like I said, aforementioned, uh, my first Rasheed Rice share across way too many leagues. And he then proceeds to uh, get into a car crash the same day. So that was interesting. Um, I've been taking a shit ton of digs, and I'm still going to continue to go on the digs train. I just... I, I can understand the argument that people are worried about him, but I just, whatever. Uh, I think I've seen people, I'm smart people on both sides of the argument, but I just, I can't pass up. Are Josh you both Rowe. sidesing the digs thing? <laughs> There's good people on both sides. I love it. There's good people on both sides. You know what? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's our generation's uh, uh, political battle. It, you know, we're, we got the election coming up, so we're already going to see too many people arguing. So I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, go on to right. my side and we'll be fine. I can't um, draft Stefan Diggs anymore because of woke. Just, you know, just give it up. <laughs> the woke media doesn't want me to draft Stefan Diggs. Um, then we got Debo. Uh, Hollywood Brown's been going way earlier than this since, and especially since the, the Rasheed Rice news. So I thought he would go like a round earlier. So I have, it's kind of a, a little bit of Rasheed Rice insurance if something does happen, I guess. Um, but yeah, eight twelve seems super cheap. I could have taken Kittle. I could have taken yeah, Kittle, just... but I took Injoku. I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like kind of I would split it down the middle. Like I don't really have a lean too much. Um, Christian Watson fell all the way to ten twelve, and I have a shit ton of Christian Watson, so I wasn't like super jazzed to take him. But if he falls that far. Then I was between a bunch of running backs, which this is a good range for running backs. We got uh, Demont, Pollard, Brian Robinson, Jalen Warren. So I went Demont, just get my solid 15 points and and move on. Um, then I traded up. I got Jacoby Myers just to fill my flex. Ramondre fell all the way to 12-6, which is pretty crazy because I think his ADP on Dynasty Data Lab is like ninth round. Zach Moss, Curtis Samuel, and then I got I cucked myself with Antonio Gibson just a little bit ahead of where I would like to take him just so that I kind of lock up the backfield. The um, spite picks here are just incredible. Are you gonna are you gonna have energy to draft a, a best ball team after this victory lap? This is <laughs> this is pretty intense, man. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna get Moss or Samuel or like all like I feel like all these guys I'm getting now in these rounds. I'm like, I feel like in other drafts I've done, they've been going like three or four rounds earlier. So I'm like, I feel I feel very good about this one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're trying to stay flexible. Don't have my own first, but other than that, it's you know, it feels pretty good. I feel like I feel like I do think you have the heavy scoring edge on me though. Like, like actually once we get into the season, we're gonna see those projections. It's gonna be like 165 points which is like absolutely bonkers so i think i think think you'll be feeling pretty good once we go into the season i just i just want to kiss 250 once uh i came <laughs> close a couple of times last year with a, di a few different teams but really just want to just get it up there it'll be good um okay let's get into a draft why don't we hop in if anyone's in the chat and has any bullets left i know some people have uh some people have, uh, I think Tyler already maxed and a few people have other already maxed. Um, but if you do have any bullets left, um, feel free to jump in. Um, but yeah, what else have you done any drafts recently? How have you been, is there anything you've been noticing, um, that is throwing you off? How have you, how have you been playing the Rasheed Rice stuff? Cause I didn't like his ADP before, but I feel like if there is uncertainty there and he falls to like the 35 or 40 range, I feel like I'd be scooping him up. Yeah. Um, I think if he falls, absolutely going to get him. Uh, I don't think you have any reason to reach for him. Um, but it's definitely a good, good opportunity to, to have him slide there. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty bullish on him, um, for the season. So any sort of value you can get seems good. And thus far, anything, it, it doesn't seem like anything, uh, significant, uh, has, has really happened. Hopefully. So I, you know, hopefully there, there isn't too much of, uh, of a suspension. I don't like being suspension guy. <laughs> so this is, it's a little weird, but yeah. Um, he's a fun player. Yeah. Rice. Okay. So we looks like we got the one Oh five spot. Let's see. Oh, this is a, this is a, this is a sharp room. We got vaporware one, one, we got chipsy. 
We got oh we got we got Karain at 108. Right. And then who else do we have? We have Rusty at the one twelve spot. Okay, so this is gonna be a this is gonna be a, a absolute buzzsaw <sighs> we'll draft. So oh, let's God, go. we're already up. Let's go, Jefferson. Let's go, your boy, the guy you just took in the draft. Yeah. I think I prefer good. him over Bijan and Brees. I just think the upside is just insane with him. So not gonna pass that up. Yeah. We have the fun clock issue, uh, it looks like. So we're going to have to be really mindful of that. Casey saying he moved up Rice's rankings. Risk take your equal spike weeks. Exactly. That's, you know what? The crazier the wide receiver, uh, the more I want to take them. Um, so I think that's, uh, you know, we've, we, we, the risk takers and the, the like, dig, talk about like Diggs is just an absolute psychopath. And he just puts out crazy tweets. And I don't know if he's gotten any trouble really, but um, yeah. <laughs> You 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 want crazy wide receivers? It's the confidence. Yeah, um, you know, not really pleased with how he uh, you know was kind of like weaving in and out of traffic. Uh, did not seem that nimble. So <laughs> that's stuff we're gonna have to work on in, in training camp is the agility. Um, you know, el el elusive, I would say, because he walked away from the scene of an accident. <laughs> is this bad taste? Feels like yards yard after contact with another car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Um, okay. So let's see what else is going on in this draft. So yeah, pretty, pretty normal draft. It looks, we got Pat going, uh, our boy Amon Ra at one eight. We got vaporware. Yeah. So nothing, oh, nothing rusty. crazy. So far. I love it. Nico and Drake. Rusty, uh, letting his nuts hang and taking Drake London, uh, 113, which was our, our original move after we, the Kirk Cousins signing. But it's, mm -hmm. he's been, he's been moving up. Like, I think he's been going. I've been seeing him go like whatever, 15th, 16th pick. So I feel like we were a little bit ahead of our skis, but not, not too much, right? Like that yeah. seemed, seemed fine. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you now, um, you're not going to bully me into drafting Stefan Diggs here. It's not happening. Okay. So we can move on. <laughs> um, what do you uh what do you want to do here? I just want to say I knew I knew Pat was taking HN there. I was like a hundred percent certainty that he was taking HN. Yeah. Um I'm fine with any I, I say we go receiver. Um okay. yeah, I don't I don't love Taylor or Saquon, uh, to be completely honest. Yeah. Plus, I think in this room, I feel like it might get a little a little pissy with all these uh badges, especially red badges. So um yeah. Um, what do you think? You want to go Devante, DJ Moore, or Debo? So, okay, so Diggs went. I kind of, I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, you know, I like Devante, but if we want to switch it up with one of the San Fran guys and then we can set up a, a San Fran stack with Purdy later on. So we've got San Fran and Vikings so far. Um, scroll down real quick, make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah, I'm good with deep. Yeah, we'll do Debo. We ran out. Wait, now is I know that where the timer's at. Happened to us the first draft where we like again? They hate us because they ain't us. Yeah, what the hell? Underdog, uh, big underdog is uh, scheming against us. They don't want us to have the full clock. Okay, yeah. well that's that's okay as long as we know it's gonna happen. All right, so we're gonna it's gonna come back to us pretty fast here based on this. Um so what do you want to run out? I mean, if Taylor I don't think Taylor's gonna fall. If, if Taylor were to fall all the way to us, I would take him, but I'm assuming Vaporware. Well, actually, he already has one running back, so I don't know if he's yeah. gonna but the ADP value is certainly there. Um oh he does it. I, I like I like Dell or neighbors, um probably over these other guys, but I'd say we we load up on receiver unless we want to go our boy Laporta, um, and then we have a couple outs for uh, San San Fran and the Jared Goff staff later on. I feel like any of these wide receivers are going to outscore Laporta though. Like I I get the argument, but I don't think you're seeing that gap with him that you saw with with Kelsey and and some of those other elites a few years ago. And I'm I'm slowly kind of like. Backing up on La the Laporta, oh my gosh, the Laporta hype um, with Detroit, you know, seeming like they're going to add another wide receiver in the draft. Um, so I could just see him getting slightly fewer targets, but 
I think he still had like obviously was the tight end one last year, but like I just from a scoring perspective, I kind of want to build out wide receiver here. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Ah, uh, fuck. Neighborwear took took neighbors. I I don't know, man. I'm all in on neighbors. Like I just, I I don't know if you can be higher on neighbors than I am. Like I I, I don't. Okay, let's see. So, wow. All right. We were talking about rice. Um, so we could try to do a home stack. You want to go waddle? I kind of like waddle. Yeah, I do really like waddle here. Um, do we like waddle over Evans or Rice though? Um, definitely over Rice. I just think we can. I think he's gonna be cheaper. Um, yeah. I don't view much of a difference between Waddle and Evans. So yeah. All right. Let's live a little. Just secure our spike week. Spike weeks with Debo and, and Waddle, right? Like if they can just trade. Trade 30 point games, then we'll feel pretty yeah. good with that. Yeah, so far we've got uh Justin Jefferson, Debo Samuel, and Jalen Waddle. So heavy, heavy whiz room so far. There are one, two, uh, three, four, five teams that have only drafted wide receivers. So it's good to be out in front of that. Yeah, I think uh I think we played it right here. Like I don't want to uh get caught behind this this avalanche and be forced to take uh whatever tyler lockett picked 90 or something like that so feels pretty good yeah um okay so yeah uh, so pat's taking rasheed rice at 32 there so buying the dip on him we got vaporware with taylor fine falling all the way to pick 24 pairing him up with cmc and then securing neighbors. So that's a very fun start. We got Chipsy going three wide receiver like us. And what, who else? Rusty going Nico and Drake London. And now he's back up. So we'll see. We'll see what he does here. Mm, D Henry, 35. Love that. That's yeah, cool. he's been he's been sneaking up. I, I think once like the the normal public gets in here, he's gonna go two or three turn. Yeah the normal public <laughs> once it's they just, break out of arkham and get in here like it's yeah man like i don't know it's so funny like i've just been talking to people about like streaming and stuff and i'm just like yeah like it's actually crazy that pe we are drafting right now like like i know obviously it's been i think the big world's been going on for a few years now but like there is truly no off season and um, the people who are here right now watching and, and, and consuming fantasy football content this time of year and starting in February, like you gotta be, you gotta be a grinder. So we, we appreciate you. And we are, we are also uh, sick in the same way. So always appreciate literally it. built different. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Incredible um, stuff. We got our boy Caleb in here, another YouTube creator. So go uh, go look on his channel, and uh, he makes some really good Dynasty content. So go check him out. Let's see. Ooh. I think Pat's going to try to build out the Mahomes stack. He's got Rice and Kelsey. Um, okay, so I I like ETN. Um, if he were to follow to us, I feel like this is um, very cheap for ETN. Like I know, I, I know he kind of fell off at the end of the year, but that seems like a pretty nice price. Also open to cup. Um, but I feel like we, 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 we buy the dip on. Uh, yeah. On yeah. I'd like to get a stud running back here. If you're cool with it, you want to lock yeah. it in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's lock it in. Okay. Nice. You got the hound ready? The wolf? I do have the hound ready. I have uh have some new uh some new shades but uh, we haven't uh, i haven't gotten to pull them out yet for the uh, right situation so mm. um so yeah well that's what almost like seven picks of adp for etn i feel like pick 44 etn seems wrong like um yeah i saw ron stewart put out a tweet today that was like i feel like etn should be like a second round pick like i think it's just it's kind of the same thing as we see a lot of times with just the recency bias on he started the season super, super hot and then kind of cooled down. I just, I don't have confidence that Tank Bigsby or whoever else they bring in that they're not going to be in the same situation where they just want to like 
when when push comes to shove, they're going to want to give ETN most of the work. Um, he's just – I know he fell off at the end of the season, but the offense was just kind of not running well, some weird variants, some weird stuff going on. So uh, – and he's not like a target for me necessarily, but if he like if he falls like he does in this room, then I'm definitely definitely willing to scoop him up. Yeah, I would uh, I would agree with that. And I when you kind of look at the value you're getting on him, and then the premium that you're paying for uh, Devon A. Chan, I've consumed some of that fud lately. You know, with Mostert getting signed to a new deal down there. I mean, there's a real chance that he's not the lead back for Miami and you're drafting him in the second round. Like yeah. I get the, the case behind it. I love it. I'm here for it. But when you've got ETN going two full rounds later, like that's, it I'm doesn't seem right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem right. All right. So um, I'm, I like McBride. I don't know if we're gonna get. Yeah. I don't know if we're gonna get pushed off of wide receiver too much, but we have three. So otherwise, Reed or Hollywood probably. I feel like Reed or and we could build out like a little Green Bay thing coming back because we've got some Green Bay San Francisco that. No. Yeah, I'm fine with either. Let's do it. We'll wait on tight end. We have tight end at home. Yeah, we got Kittle. Who else do we have? Um, maybe an Engram stack. Maybe a, a, a late Janu. Um, yeah, there's some some options. We have, I, other than like snagging some uh, Mandrews early in the season, which sounds sick because that's like basically February, like early February. Yeah, it's um, already been two months. Yeah, I don't think we've we've really gone uh, elite elite tight end uh, too often. So that was that was kind of a mainstay for both of us last year. Yeah, it's just weird. Like it's weird because you almost want to like you feel like you can push it a little bit more because there is more options with with Kelsey with Andrews McBride. Like I still think McBride is one of the best picks. In yeah, the- McBride and Andrews. Like this like fifth round for both of those guys. Like I feel like in a lot of years they would be like second round picks, but because there's like, it seems like there's a plethora of options there from Laporta through like McBride or Pitts. It's just like, they're all kind of getting pushed back. So, yeah. Agree. Um, Gosh, so so Daily Rojo does get the Mahomes stack. So that worked out very well. Um, we got Rusty going Pittman at in Rome at 37, and then Pitts and Stroud. So pairing up Nico uh, with Stroud. So yeah, that's that's it's a very nice uh, piss boy start there. Um, yeah, for Rusty. He's right, let's do some str- some strategy here without getting too out in front of ourselves. Um, we could go Kittle. Yeah. Um. And then hope for a Purdy. I like Deontay. Probably Deontay out of those other uh, receivers there. Or Hop- Hopkins or Godwin are fine fine as well, too, if we if we do want to go that way. I like Ingram here, too, uh, if we get – I don't think we'll get pushed off of uh, Kittle. Yeah, what are your what are you what are your thoughts on Ingram? Because I feel like he should be going higher based on I know it was kind of a weird situation um, with Kirk being out, but uh, what what do you think about Ingram? Uh, I I love the price, man. Like he's just forever affordable in Dynasty and redraft. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. And I mean, what was it like 114 catches last season, yeah. and then you. It's insane. And you look at the stuff with, uh, I saw, I can't remember who put it out. Somebody put out a chart of like Doug Peterson tight ends and tight end ones in their fantasy finish at the end of the year. All right. So Ridley is eight spots. Um, we, we did lose Kittle. We do we have, have we have Addison. So, may, uh, but, or I mean, we have Jefferson's. So we could go Addison. I think I still prefer Deontay, but if we want to go for the correlation as the tiebreaker, um, I'm down for Deontay over Addison just in case the QB situation isn't ideal to support two wide receivers there. I don't want to lean too far 
into that. I think you can definitely. That's me being a chicken shit. How about that? No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't mind that. I mean, honestly, like, yeah, I, I like Addison as like a player, but yeah, the situation doesn't seem super conducive, especially with Je Jefferson there just being the the true alpha. Um, he'll get probably a little bit of early season boost with Hawk being out, but I don't know. I don't want to weigh that too much, right? Like if we're really focused on uh, the playoffs in week 17. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, like back to Ingram, um, uh, Doug Peterson tight end ones in his offense traditionally finished within like the top five for fantasy. It's pretty awesome, man. So I'm here for the discount. Like, seems like a great player, great athlete at tight end. And he, you know, they just lost one of their main target earners with Ridley. I'm sure they'll, you know, pick somebody in the draft as well, but dude's locked in on those crossing routes across the middle. Like, just seems like easy money. Yeah, it's I, I just I I think he's just being a little bit disrespected just based on um which whatever he plays for the Jaguar. So I feel like just like kind of a weird situation. But if any if any other tight end was to put up 114 receptions, he'd be going how high, right? Like yeah, probably ridiculous. a lot. Gosh, we keep losing our guys. Um yeah, we just lost Engram. We just lost Aaron Jones. We could have stacked up with Jefferson. Uh, I think we have a guy I like here, but let's see what else we could do. Um, so, okay. So my two thoughts here are um, DeMont as our RB2, since we have five receivers, or we could go Christian Watson and then hope that love falls to us. Um, what do you, what do you feel in here? Um, I'm, down with that we've got some other options at qb that we can kind of push around to um tight end we are getting tight but yeah okay. we did it i, I think so. demon is the right pick there uh, i just think whatever like that allows us a little bit of flexibility with our build too with with two two guys in the first seven rounds uh yeah if five running backs um then we can do that if we want so yeah and we stayed pretty we stayed locked in on wide receiver too, uh, with Jaden Reed and Deontay there when we could have kind of veered off. We were getting we're we're in like midsummer form with the whiz, man. The the charts looking clear. It's looking good. Yeah, I think it's it's weird too, because like that Christian Watson, obviously I'm still in on him, but and especially in best ball. But yeah, I just think like it, it almost makes more sense. Like we're gonna be up at 92, like probably unless this room pushes them up but like we'll probably get some rookies that we like at that point knock on knock on wood but um which i almost prefer those guys right like if it's going like 10 or 15 picks later i almost prefer those rookies just for the upside versus watson definitely does have upside but it's also like what if his hamstring is just dust although although he is going to a, a quote special lab for yeah. his hamstring, so um he might be going into a somebody into brought a up like the early oh sorry go ahead no 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 you're good i'm just, just making a star wars joke oh damn it go for it come on man my timing um okay so let's see what's going on rusty is that that's his first uh, running back with pollard and then yep of course we jinxed it and worthy and ad mitchell go wow house, which i feel like they're just going to keep getting pushed up so it's not that surprising but yeah, Karain's team is pretty scary as well. He's got Amon Ra, Devon A. Chan, Rashi Rice, Kelsey, Mahomes, Godwin, Kamara. Uh would guess. I don't know where he would go from there. I say we go love if he falls to us. Yeah, so he should. It doesn't <laughs> seem like he's right. No one else. Oh, this guy has Christian Watson, so maybe he goes love. But he does already have a QB. Oh, okay. So let's just hope, you know, the room is as considerate to us as we were of them. We'll see how it goes in this $10 draft. And he goes swift. Okay, sweet.
What do you think? Chubb's still going 89. Incredible. Yeah. I, I, who was it? Uh, Crane, Crane just had uh, an injury guy on, and he was saying, like, okay, let's let's lock him love. Yeah. <clears throat> so that'll be good. That gives us some cheap tight end options later on, too, I think. Ooh, good point. Very good point. Um, Yeah, he was talking to some injury guy, and he was basically saying, like, it makes no sense that Chubb is going that early. Like, even if he does come back, like, he's already – I think he's already tore the ACL before. Um, And obviously, like, he is pretty, like, superhuman from what we've seen in the past, but I don't – not a bet I want to be making that with a 29 year old running back coming off a, an, a, a knee that's been injured multiple times throughout his uh, college and NFL career. So the hyperbaric chamber uh, report where he's like in it every morning at 5 a.m. is pretty badass. Like, could you imagine being the guy that showed up to the facility in the offseason that's like trying to get your reps in and you have to ask Nick Chubb to get out of the hyperbaric chamber? <laughs> he's just living in there. Oh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Dude, that that picture of Nick Chubb uh, uh, jumping before the hundred yard dash in high school is like still one of the craziest pictures of all time. Just insane. All right, we're coming up. Let's let's put some care um, into this. So uh, let's see. I, I say I don't. I say we let's go to go to a wide receiver and see if there's anybody. You got Minnesota, San Fran, Miami, Green Bay, and Carolina. Don't love Dobbs. Sutton and Jacoby are fine. Troy Franklin, fine. Um, I almost think we go Purdy. Is too. I think Purdy or, went. Oh, did Purdy? Oh, Purdy just went. Yeah. Um, what about you? Have Tua. Yeah, we could go Tua as well and just be done at QB if we want. Um. Tight end. I do we like our options is, yet? What's going on with uh with the Tyreek Hill drafter? Where is he? I'm just trying to think on the board because he's behind us. So I say we push him. I say we go Troy Franklin, and then if if Tua falls to us, we take him. Otherwise, okay. I don't think it's I don't think it's necessary. But I yeah. mean, right? There's no. I mean, I guess maybe. Right, like the H Han and Moster drafter doesn't really make a difference if they have they're probably not going to stack the running back with the quarterback, right? So I mean that would be some real sick behavior from dudes that are drafting in early April. Yeah. Um, okay, what's going on? Why don't you uh run through the squad real quick and then why don't you give us our your uh, Jordan Love thoughts because um, obviously he had a really hot end of the season. Um, and I've seen people be super high on him or people, some people tempering their expectations. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, uh, at QB Jordan love, uh, got him 10 spots past ADP, which is really nice. Uh, running back another value scoop, uh, with ETN, uh, seven picks behind ADP and another value scoop with, uh, Monty. Uh, at pick 77. <clears throat> then at wide receiver, we've got uh, Justin Jefferson, Debo Samuel, Jalen Waddle, Jaden Reed, Deontay Johnson, and Troy Franklin. So the old one, two, six uh, build. Yeah, I like the um, turning out so far. Yeah, I'm, you asked about love. I'm pretty, I'm pretty high on him. Uh, and I think it's, I think his, his price is obviously like really nice um here where you can get him uh in around like the eighth or i'm sorry seventh and eighth round here kind of feels like dak last season um yeah true so like my my big positives on him are obviously like his his arm strength is incredible a little bit of an athlete so he can scramble um and the growth that he showed kind of as the season progressed um was seemed legit I mean, like over 4,000 yards, over 30 touchdowns, uh, and was just absolutely shredding some teams. Um, I think a lot of his the the metrics um, look good. And I think the big thing is just the stability of Green Bay. Um, and he's paired up with one of the best uh, offensive coaches in the league. I mean, you've seen that. 
you've seen Lafleur just like game plan teams into oblivion. And I think he sets his QBs up for success really well and plays to uh, his players strength. Uh, they've got such a kind of like, nobody knows what's going to happen with their wide receiver room, which is kind of crazy. Like who's going to emerge as the alpha. So that's kind of fun. Um, but I just, I think it's an ascending offense. I want to get, you know, pieces of it. And if you can get a discount on them, even better. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, just you want to invest in like offenses on the rise. And we saw them just go absolutely crazy at the end of the year. Um, I mean, yeah, some of those throws he makes are just absolutely insane. Um, yeah. And they're just, yeah, it's young talent, right? Like um, all the, like Wicks and Watson and Dubs and Jaden Reed. Like, yeah, I, I think in, in manage, it will be kind of hard to predict like week by week. So I'm a little bit, I don't have any Jaden Reed, like literally zero, which I'm a little bit sad about, but I also feel like Christian Watson could just like outperform him at like four rounds cheaper. So yeah, kind of like arbitraging that. But then also if Jaden Reed is the guy you're like, oh shit, I just missed out on. I feel like I fall into that trap a lot of times where I take the cheaper guy um, and I'm like, oh wait, I, you know, you don't. I think it's justified, as, especially at receiver. Cause I mean, you I get it's like a, a one for one instance, but like Keenan Allen always had bad hamstrings until he didn't. And then he just like ripped off six seasons of elite production. So, I mean, there could be something in the way that uh, Watson was prepping for the season, but I get, he's had a lot of soft tissue injuries, but I, I think if he gets it solved, like the profit you make on that is pretty ridiculous. There we go. We pushed Tua all the way around and here he is. So let's go Tua. Now you want to go Tua or John Brooks? Ooh. Just keep pushing it. Um, let me see. Because if, wait, if we push him all the way around. Oh, no, no, no. The guy who has Tyreek doesn't have a I, I say yet. we take two. I think this is a gift yeah. getting him this far past ADP. Um, okay. We did it. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, then we can be done at quarterback if we want to as well, unless we want to tack on like a Bryce Young or something late, if it makes sense. Um, and there, there's some decent running back options in this range. Um, we have two two guys in the first seven rounds as well. Um, but I'm assuming Brooks will probably go to Vaporware or Gypsy here. I'm, I'm assuming based on based on Karain writing it, writing him up and his article just coming out on on Brooks. I'm assuming, uh, yeah, he's gonna go. Yep, there it is. Right on cue. Hot off the press. <laughs> It is kind of weird in Dynasty. I think they were talking about on chip chasing, where it's like with a guy like Brooks, it's like so much of a rook, so much of a running back's like value comes in like the first like two or three years. Um, mm -hmm. it's like if he's already missing his rookie year or like part of his rookie year, it kind of like scares me off a little bit of a guy like it's different than a wide receiver where I feel like we see like a JMO like coming in and he just holds his value based on just small sample size i feel like running back it's like if you just even if you don't get a full year of production it just doesn't feel great um okay chuba feels nice here right or yeah yeah we have we have chuba and we have deontay so we can um the only thing would be we don't have a tight end yet so we're getting a little bit thin there but let's go chuba yeah i think we can Push it on tight end and yeah, push it when okay. it comes back. You want to do it? Yeah, let's do Chuba. Okay. Um, so my my counterpoint to your running back thing would be Javante Williams. Um, because that dude really didn't have that impressive of a rookie season. He had the one game that he took over and played the full like snap share for the game. Um and he was going in like <laughs> the second round of dynasty startups. Yeah, like I took him in the second over CD Lamb one time. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, yeah, that was insane. So I get like all the missed tackle forest and juke and evade rate stuff like with him, but like if you get like just a little bit of juice from from those rookie running backs, like you can you can use that to buy other stuff. I feel like it's pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, it just, I guess it depends on the cost. Like, I just, I think if 
I think he's probably like the thing with running backs is I feel like people get so juicy for them in rookie drafts that like he might get pushed up ahead of some running uh, wide receivers that like go first round, which I would not support, but I, I feel like it's going to happen. I feel like rookie drafts this year are going to be crazy. Like I feel like people are, especially with so many options at wide receiver after kind of like the O'Doons and Bowers, like the 107 and maybe and McCarthy. Like I feel like after that point, it's just going to be the wild west of like, I like Lad McConkey. I like this guy. Yeah. I like Worthy, right? Like, um, I think it's going to be pretty crazy. Who is like, who's your, if you don't want to give it away, you don't have to, but like, who's your one bet out of that kind of like oasis of, uh, of receivers that Ooh, you think is question. just like going to pop? Like, just one guy that you're like, ah, this will be fun. I'll take some shots. Outside of the top, I mean, I think the obvious answer is worthy. I just think, but like yeah. outside of outside of worthy, I mean, I really like Ricky Pearsall. I don't think he's going to go that early in rookie drafts. Probably just, but I just, I just don't. I just he he his 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 um his athletic testing was really good. Just like tape watching, his he looks pretty insane. And mm -hmm. I think he probably is going to go second round. So like, I know sometimes that's a trap to just take the second round uh, guys. Like we see some guys obviously bust in that range with like Mingo and, but um, I just think, I think he's uh, a team's going to draft him in the second round and I'm going to be all in, especially if he is going later that like, if he's going like late second or early third in rookie drafts, I'm going to be, be all over that. Um, yeah. I, it's the Florida man vibes. It's good stuff. It's contagious. The the, the bet on me uh, tattoo is what's so it. crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest. All right, so um, we've got a fun inflection point here uh, where we can go. Uh, I would like either Wicks or Musgrave here to kind of continue building out our Green Bay thing. Um. um I mean, how many? So wait, we have Love and we have uh, we have Jaden Reed. Reed. I mean, do you? Th I mean, I think we can probably push Musgrave. I mean, okay. I just feel like we should push him because if the other guy does have a bunch of Green Bay pieces, so he might just continue to stack it up. But I, I don't hate missing out on Musgrave. Like it's not the worst thing ever. Okay. Are you Team Craft? Little mac and cheese. No, I'm not. I, I like Musgrave more. I just think he is just super, super athletic, and that's what we want to bet on on tight ends. And I think, I think Kraft is fine. Like I don't think Kraft is bad, but I just think if we're if you're gonna bet out of one of the two, bet on the one that like is six six two sixty and runs a four five forty. I mean, yeah, he looked good when he played, and and like I think. Oh early damn on, it! That's what, what he, he should have done. Slick Ricky Rick. Purcell. Yeah. Slick Rick, um, that's fine. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of rookies. He's he's not, he's been moving up though. That's what I'm saying. Like we, he used to be going like pick 170, 180, and now he's getting some steam. Um, okay, so what other yeah tight ends and running backs? I would say right because we're we're pretty set at quarterback. We're pretty set at wide receiver. Um, yeah, I think we're wide receiver right. Let's. Yeah, we've got seven wide receivers, so I think we can we can kind of shut down shop there with what we've got. Um, Kendrick Miller goes. All right, so Musgrave so, does make it back. Do we just take Musgrave and? Yeah, I think it's fine. At this point, we're gonna spam the position anyway, so I think he's just one of three. You know, we're gonna take three names we're gonna get. So, yeah, we didn't go four four tight ends last time when I feel like we should have probably and. I think I saw sacrilegious say like, yeah, sometimes you can take four. And I'm like, okay, I feel justified now. <laughs> I feel justified now. some real sick stuff, man. <laughs> hey, 20 rounds gives you a little uh, room to live a little there. Uh, yeah, it's good. Of all the positions to indulge yourself and really just like get that extra scoop at the buffet, you want it to be tight end. <laughs> yeah, we're set. We're setting up for a, for a Janu pick later on. Oh, I can dig it. And I and saw our, uh, the Ian Harditz, uh like semi troll today with like fastest tight end ball carrier speeds in the NFL last season, and they were both Johnu Smith, which is great. Mm 
Dude, John, I mean, John was a freak athlete. Like, I even remember even in Tennessee, like, some of the some of his yak is just insane. How many targets is he going to get in that offense? I'm not sure. But it, he's going late enough where, whatever, if he gives you a few spike weeks with two touchdowns, like, yeah. I can see it. Yeah, he'll be fine. Um, so, let's see. Let's see what uh, some of our boys are doing in the chat. Uh Let's see, Daily Rojo. He has a little bit of a he has a little bit of a Denver thing going on with Sutton. Um, what else is going on? Goddard. Does he have? Did he take Mike Evans? I don't think so. He took Rasheed Rice, right? No, yeah. he took he took Godwin. Okay. So he's got Godwin. He's got a couple of stacks going with the Bucks and with. KC, and then we got Vaporware just loading up on on rookies um, with and Gabe Davis. What Leggett. a celebration! Oh, you got anytime you can pair T Law with Gabe Davis, you just have to do it. I oh yeah, Evan Ingram too. Okay. Yeah, so that, I like and, it. Oh, so he's got the full. All right. Yeah, that's nice. He's got the full just Jackson. Lean into it. Going. Bowers and Ingram. I feel like that's a nice double tap at the at the turn right there. You kind of get some. You're, 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 uh, kind of, I mean, and not that Ingram is a floor necessarily, right? But you get some to cover off, and then you can, yeah, for the, for the absolute moonshot. All right. So, um, John U. Smith, speaking of, you know, tight ends in, uh, Art Smith offenses, we do have a slipping Pat Fryer move that's now 20 spots behind ADP. I mean, I'm I'm definitely down to take him. I mean, with I think they're gonna draft somebody in the second round, but yeah, I still think he's probably like right. Like usually rookies don't come in and just completely dominate targets. So if it's him and Pickens, I know it's not amazing, but I, I think Fryermouth is pretty good. Like we were yeah. we were really high on him right before this year. He kind of was injured and that tanked him a little bit. But um, uh, let's see. King of QC might take him considering he has one tight end. So yeah. Far. Let's see what happens. It's gonna be a little dicey. Um, what else do we have going? We could go. Definitely don't like. I just don't. I don't get the likely. Okay. All right. So he makes it. Do we? Do we? Do it? Oh yeah. Twenty three spot. I'm not good at math. Twenty two spots. Yeah, it's. I mean, I get. I feel like all the Pittsburgh guys is kind of weird because like it's like, do you stack them with Russ? Do you stack them with Fields? Like, I feel like that affects ADPs when there's not a clear, clear guy to stack them with. Um, yeah. But there we go, right? We 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 push tight end, and like Musgrave and Muth is like, are they that much different than like Goddard or like Jake Ferguson or something like that later? Like right, like they go like six rounds earlier or something like that. Like, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't, we, we need, we need tight ends with the, the MU and the name is what we're going for. We're, we're all in on. Mm, mm. Did, did you see that there was a Pat Fryermuth interview? Um, I don't know what it was on. I, I got served it on YouTube and brother, he was looking thick. He's getting ready to block in an Arthur Smith offense. I was like, I, I almost didn't recognize him. Like he had like a he had like a mustache, and I'm like, is this like a fort? Is this like a like a like a middle aged <laughs> like fifty year old guy go going here, or is this Friar Muth? I love it. Um, all right, oh, you want to take our foot off the? Nope, oh, sorry. Um, I was just saying we got sniped on John and fuck. Yeah, it's kind of stinky. Um, do we? I think we go running. I think we got to go running back. Yeah, I agree. Um, Rico. Slip in ten spots past ADP. I say we go Rico. I mean, we who the hell knows what's going to happen in that backfield? Yeah. But I've seen a lot of people saying that Rico is a very good pick at cost. So if we can get him, if we can get him past ADP, I think that's a pretty pretty good move. Let's do it. I have not gotten to a pull out the new shades, but you know what? It'll it'll happen another time. We, we, we got a lot of streams left. Yeah, dude. It's, we got such an early start on the season. This is great. We got all kinds of time. Vaporware, you're 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 killing us with the, the Leggett and Pearsall picks. So just yeah. 
enjoy what you have, you know? Late night bundles. <laughs> oh. Um, what I, I'm, I'm very interested in all the, um, Washington wide receivers. You got Polk, um, you have, uh, what's, it, uh, McMillan and obviously Rome. It seems like one of those situations where they all seem pretty good, like just from a, a vibe space. Um, so I, I Polk and, and McMillan have been moving up, uh, a little bit into this like 15th, 16th round range. Um, yeah. And they do seem like, I think all of them kind of, it's kind of weird when you have three really good receivers, right? Even in a good offense. So uh, McMillan and Polk seem like guys that could be like thrive in the NFL, um, kind of just uh, in a different role and kind of less uh, competition from just really good receivers in a college room. Um, if, if they land in the right, I think they're a little bit more landing spot dependent, obviously, once you get this far, but uh yeah, I it, I mean, and that's pretty wild for Washington too. Like their entire like offensive core just cleared out in one off season. Like that's that's rough. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, one transfer portal. Dude, the college is so. I am not like a college football watcher anymore. I used to be, but it's just it's a completely different, completely different game now. It's so interesting because me and my friends were were like having debates about like paying college athletes in like 2013 and then it's like whatever like six or seven years later it's finally started happening but um i i'm all i'm all for it obviously for the for the players but it, it definitely creates a interesting dynamic with just everyone kind of it's a it's a wild west so i i, I do wonder yeah. if like, so there's some different like rules that come in eventually um where you can only like transfer etc cetera, etc cetera. um but definitely definitely good to see the players getting getting paid yeah, it is. Uh, it is wild. Um, where do you want to? We're coming up in one here. What are you wanting to do? Um, we do have another falling tight end. Yeah, should we just? I mean, there's a lot of tight ends we can take, but do you want to just take Henry and just be done with it? Is there? I mean, we could take Kraft and just handcuff ourselves, but I don't think I really like that. I feel like we take the value on. Henry, yeah. we just keep keep value hounding, and then running back is not very much different from this point out. To be completely honest, like what's the difference between this 16th round and the 20th round for running back? So, um, yeah. So I love it. You were talking about Fryermuth, uh run blocking in an Art Smith offense. Like, can you? He is going to come up with the sickest shit for Darnell Washington to do in space. Like, can you imagine this, dude? I. Yeah, I mean, you, he's going to be on the field, right? Like, he's going to, he, he is a, if talk about blocking tight end, like, he was made to be a blocking tight oh, end. Oh, yeah. He's, he's essentially an offensive tackle that can catch passes. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it does worry me a little bit, kind of like about the Kyle Pitts thing, right? Like, you have more of a receiver type tight end, and he just doesn't get on the field that much. But at the cost we took him, it's fine. And I do think, I don't know. I, I think, I think Arthur Smith, as an offensive coordinator, not as gal brain as Arthur Smith, uh, just unhinged uh, head coach with no one really checking him. So hopefully that helps a little bit, but it is, it is a little bit scary. That is pour, pouring some yeah. cold, cold water on my on my moose uh, uh, love. So I just want to see uh, you know George Pickens in the AJ Brown role. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so here's the question. Uh, okay, never mind. Bryce Young just went. I was going to say, yeah. we take Bryce Young and just stack it up. Um, and he got, yeah, Shipley, AJ Dillon, is the Abenacanda, um, Foreman. Hank I actually Bigley. like Foreman the most here because what we're talking about with Chubb, like he does seem like he's in line to get some free touches. You want to do it? Or uh, yeah, that's fine. I don't. There's no real. There's no real difference between these guys for me. I do think Pat is going to take Izzy Abanacanda because he has like a, I forget what he was talking like thirty percent Izzy Abanacanda or twenty five percent Izzy Abanacanda. So um, if he, that's justified. I mean, he's got some juice, man. For a for a fifth fifth round pick, was he fourth or fifth? 
Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, and I mean his 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 Raz was crazy, and he was only twenty years old. So yeah, um, whatever. But obviously he's behind Brees. But if there's no one else in that backfield, handcuff for Brees at this cost is pretty solid. And we've seen second year running backs be pretty uh, profitable. So good to take shots at this cost. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, shout out to Vaporware uh, snagging uh, our boy Fant. Hey, you know what? I think this is the first startup draft where neither you nor I took Fant in like every, probably ever. It's real growth, man. Uh, I still couldn't help myself from Dulcich, uh, and Fant went immediately after that. So, yeah, you know, um, we're growing up emotionally. We're you know, like kind of exploring the field of other tight ends seeing who else is out there so yeah i'm a little bit scared because i only have njoku so i'm gonna have to try to you know what i mean like it's a little bit thin behind that which i don't i not my comfort zone at all but i wanted to switch it up and go wide receiver heavy because i usually right like i usually go tight end early which kind of leaves me a little bit thin at wide, at wide receiver so um and then yeah friar and and Kamat went nine two and nine three right after njoku um which so it's like weird. Like some guys where I think usually they fall, they've been pushed up. So yeah, I think Friar Muth, he went in the ninth. That's kind of he nice. went nine two. He went before Kittle, before Mayer, before Dalton Schultz, before three rounds before Goddard. So like, yeah, that was kind of wild. Dude, the Kittle slander is insane right now. The FUD around him is a real treat. <laughs> Yeah, Tyler, we, we're going to have to have you on to uh, talk your uh, exposures and whatnot. So maybe uh, maybe next week we'll have to have you on. Um, we do have uh, Steph, Steph Miller from uh, Legendary Upside will be on with me on Friday. Um, she has been – I think she does – she's been doing the Dynasty rankings for, for Leg Up. So every week she's been updating those. She has her uh, her – uh, waiver wire article that she does in season. And I think she, she'll be doing a lot more stuff for, for legendary upside. So, uh, well, that will be a very fun one. That's awesome, man. All right. So we're coming up here in two. Uh, uh Oh, I, it's literally because he was 20, what is it, 20 picks past ADP? Like You're going to shame us for drafting Friermuth? Come on, my guy. Okay. I've seen I gotta, some of the trash that goes in your shopping cart. Don't come on <laughs> Bindles' channel and try to shame the man. Ridiculous. Um, Shipley? I kind of like Shipley here, yeah. Do we have any other weird shit we can, we can pull? <laughs> what a great question. Um... Uh, what other tight ends are available here? We don't have any. No. Chip, Tucker. Tucker. I don't like it. Yeah, we went Shipley. I, I, I like Shipley, honestly. I yeah. just we we've talked about him before, but uh good good testing numbers and catches passes. Um he kind of looks like he's 12, which scares me a little bit, but um you know what? We'll 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 take the good with the bad. Over yeah, I mean um it's, uh, it's Izzy went one pick before us. We, we got sniped. Yeah, that'll happen. Um, J.K. Dobbins still. I think he did. He meet with the. Uh, was it the Chiefs? with the Chargers? Okay. And then AJ Dillon goes. Yeah. Tyler, oh. t Tyler, uh, Tyler, we're gonna see, we're gonna see your exposures and see what's what's going on there. Sir. Triple X exposures, be good. <laughs> Tyler will uh, have that content on his uh, OnlyFans. Uh, his exposures, it's it's it is uh, behind the paywall. Yeah, shame sharpens D gems. That's so true. You know what? Like it is literally truly, especially this time of year. It's like you guys are drafting this guy. What the fuck? Like. <laughs> Could never, and then like in like in August, we'll be like, "Why were?" And then two, <laughs> and then two sentences later, uh, just relentlessly pump like a Dylan Lobby or something like that, or like or Dylan Laub, like just you know, you're 
piece of shit for drafting this guy. But also, have you heard about this uh, two-star recruit uh, that was coming out of Dartmouth? Uh, it could be pretty incredible. <laughs> he catches passes. He catches um, passes. All right. Let's Speaking see. Of, I don't mind. You want to upset though. Dusty and go Kamini Vidal? I like Rusty. Gainwell. I like Gainwell, which I know is gross, but Gainwell, okay. Justice Hill, or Hull. But it's it, it it's it's your uh, it's your click, so you you can go what you please. You you have been asking for Gainwell, um, and I can tell there's emotionally there's something there. So I don't want to deny you a Gainwell. So we're my, gain, gonna, my Gainwell shares. It's buttoned up. It's good. Secure. Gain well secured. I'm trying to find this freaking Pat Fryermuth interview where he looks like he's about 300 pounds. Huh? 300 pounds, dude. I'm 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 I don't know if it's the angle. It's because it's kind of like from like he's sitting in a chair it's, and it's like looking up, but it's like I'm telling you, this man looked absolutely giant. So he went to Penn State, right? Yeah, he went to Penn State. Okay, so is he like full Yinzer? Like, is he just like all the way there? Like, he's just like full yeah. Pennsylvania, got the accent and everything? Oh, I don't know about the accent, but yeah, I mean, he's got to be right, like through and through. It's, 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 it's AFC blood. North football, boy. <laughs> um, Let's see. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm digging, digging through my search history, or not my, my watch. Oh, oh, man. We're getting real grimy in here. It's the amount this of, is what happens. If you guys could see the amount of fantasy football content that is on this uh, screen right now, you would be absolutely appalled. Uh, it's really like Jameer Gibbs highlights, Pete, Pete video, <laughs> Tony Pollard highlights, this highlights, this, this, this. My girlfriend's going to murder me. It's going to be like, what, stop watching fantasy football stuff for two seconds, please. At what point does it come across as like stalkerish? When like, how many like pings do you get on player profiler before it's like, man, he just keeps checking out how these dudes are, are you, built. Like, yeah, what? You, you get a, uh, you get like a, like a, the Netflix, like, are you still watching? It's like, have yeah. you touched glass? Have you, me, sir, oh have you uh, seen sunlight in the last six months? Sir, how many times do you need to look at this spider chart for uh, Christian Watson on mock draftable? Um, you know what it looks like, but. How many times are you going to watch Christian Watson against the Philadelphia Eagles his rookie year taking a, a, a crossing route 70 yards? How many times, please? I love it. I love it. He keeps going back to Will Fuller highlights. <laughs> Hey, it's been out of me for two or three years. That was one I will years. continue to, to, to go back to. Gosh, I love Will Fuller. Um, all right, we're coming up. We've got two QBs, seven running backs, seven wide receivers, three tight ends. Um, um, do we go? Do we go? JJ McCarthy and I mean, you, Galaxy Galbrain the. Uh, the Justin Jefferson, uh, JJ McCarthy uh, stack there, dude. I freaking love that idea, honestly. Yeah, let's pull it off. I think we we took McCarthy in the biggest board, didn't we? I think so. Was that last week? That'd be pretty great. Yeah, I I like McCarthy. So you can also, yeah do do we go McCarthy or do we go one? I guess I guess it makes sense to Galbraith him over Daniel Jones, right? We don't have any. Giants, unless we just think he gets a big rushing game. But yeah, no, I, I, I dig this move. Okay, let's 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 rip it. That's a uh, twenty-five picks of uh, ADP value on JJ McCarthy. Uh, thank you very much. We have uh, curated this team uh, exclusively picking fallers. Uh, it was our strategy. That's how we really <laughs> just leaned into these undervalued assets, and we're hoping that uh, you know they combine and make a blue chip portfolio. Be great. Wow, I love I love that salesman voice. That's a oh, that's, that's good. You you got to start an ASMR channel. Oh my gosh. Um. All right. Have you watched any uh Have you watched any March Madness? Yeah. Um. Watched uh, a lot of a lot of the Creighton games. Um. So that was that was pretty fun. Uh. When they got their 
when they ran into Tennessee. That was a real buzzsaw moment. Um, they made it interesting there for a while, but yeah, it's some of the games have been kind of boring, but I've, I've tried to keep up with it as much as possible. Yeah. I'm just not, I, I'm, I just, all my brain power is going towards like work and fantasy football. So like, and like keeping my relationship alive by not spending time doing those two things with my girlfriend. So, um, yeah, I don't have time, unfortunately, or I do have time, but I, I choose to use it on other things. But, uh, the one thing, the, the Purdue, uh, what's his name? Zach Eady. I actually watched him play earlier this year. Um, he, uh, he was in town. And so I, I watched him and like, that was absolutely insane to just see a, a seven, four human being who like, usually guys who are that tall, they're kind of like lanky, but like, mm-hmm watching him in person it's just like he looks like a normal jacked person but just seven four like it's actually insane i don't know yeah. how well he'll do in the nba just because he's not super fleet footed on defense but i think i'll have a role um and it's definitely fun to watch just a, a giant absolute giant human being uh, so other than other yeah. than other balls but the the uh somebody called it out in the chat uh with the caitlin clark game uh that iowa lsu game was absolute that was so freaking chippy last night that did you watch any of that i i saw some of the highlights yeah the shit talking in that game was absolutely incredible uh it was like 90s nba style like i i loved it it was great like those two teams do not like each other <laughs> dude no that was that was hype I, honestly like the whatever just good good basketball too like that was like they there's some really good players on both of those teams so yeah yeah Wemby Wemby is also seven I, they say he's seven four I feel like he might be taller than seven four honestly but yeah he's like so lanky it looks like an alien but ED obviously not as fluid and not as good anywhere close to Wemby but just from like an aesthetic standpoint you're like holy shit like this is like just a jacked guy who just happens to be seven, four, not a seven, four guy. Who's like super lanky. So yeah, the Wemby highlights still get me. Cause it almost seems like AI sometimes when you're just watching him with the arms, like just moving, like it's yeah, it, it, it's it, like it does not like, make sense. It's like the wacky inflatable tube man, but just like in, in basketball form. It's so weird. Yeah. And it's crazy. Cause he what? he's like 19, 19 or 20 now, but like, yeah. Imagine when he's like 27 and is puts on some some muscle and everything like it's gonna be absolutely crazy um Just spends three off seasons with uh with the big fundamental down there be good dude it's gonna yeah you're right that's gonna be absolutely crazy um all right well we are gonna get out of here in a second um but El Coach, any final thoughts on this team? Do you want to sauce any of these any of these teams in the chat or anything uh, before we head out? I think we we kind of we did quite a bit of saucing uh, mid draft. Um, pleased with how our team uh, turned out. Really kind of hammered running back down there down the stretch, and I uh, got a good wide receiver room uh, and kind of cleaned up at tight end. So I think I think it's good. We haven't had it. I don't, I don't feel like we've quite gotten there yet with like the multiple team stacks uh, that for it, it's hard to pull off on stream, I feel like, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. I mean, I think we, I think this, like we, we navigated the pockets pretty well, like having pushing tight end and getting Musgrave, Muth and Henry, it, uh, exciting, exciting whites. If you've ever seen that, uh, the meme, <laughs> like, uh, the, the the wine uh, wine aisle, but uh, that's that's pretty good tight end room for that late. Um, we covered off receiver early on, running back. We got our two uh, quote anchors with uh, Etn and Demont, and then got some mix of rookies and, and bets later on, and then uh, maybe maybe three stacks, right? Like uh, with 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 McCarthy going to Minnesota. Um, I, I, although I did just take Sam Darnold in a, in a dynasty startup. So, you know, I wouldn't be too mad if, uh, it was Sam Darnold. Real son of a gun, man. You keep pumping that team. It's great. That's, it's, it's going to be one and two all season, hopefully just fighting for buys. What do you think is going to happen with Minnesota? Like, do you think that, like, I just, I feel like it'd be hilarious if they just got locked out of trading up and they just have to start Sam Darnold the whole season. Like. 
Probably not so, fun for fantasy, but yeah, no, that would actually be awful. Um, it would be real on brand uh, for the Vikings to just have everything in place, and then it just gets like the rug gets pulled out from them uh, at the last minute. Um, it could definitely see it happen. I could see uh, the teams up top being extraordinarily inflexible uh, with trading out because I think the the tough thing you're seeing with uh, Arizona is where everybody is talking about how they, you know, they're willing to trade out and then trade back up. Um, and they clearly have a need at receiver side. So like they're, they're the obvious match for, for Harrison or neighbors. Um, but the impetus to trade back up, I just, I'm not, I'm not quite there. I don't, I, I can't recall too many instances of having seen that before. Um, and I, I just get the feeling that they're going to, a lot of these teams up top are really going to like, just try to squeeze everything they can. So I think Minnesota has to likely trade those two that they have for this year and probably one more for next year if they want to get up there. But I, I really feel like they're going to push to do it. Um, I would love to see them get uh, if somehow, like if May slips, I think I everybody's kind of to say that. Yeah. Like that's like the dream, dream, dream spot. Gosh, dude. Like, could you, I mean, the, the drills that Jefferson would have with a more mobile QB when he gets outside of the pocket and things start to break down, like, can you just imagine Jefferson in the open field on some of that shit? Like it's terrifying, but awesome. Yeah. I mean, I just think like that situation, like, right. Like quarterback, and the situation they land in is so important. And like, that would just be coaching staff, weapons, good old line, um, like whatever. If he needs to sit for a little bit behind Darnold, like he could, yeah. right, if they really need to. Um, obviously I'm a Lions fan, but like just from a fancy football and just football fan perspective, that would be super, super fun. And I think I'm, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. I don't know if it'll happen, but I still think there's a pretty good chance May goes number two overall. Like I think people have been penciling, penciling in Daniels because they signed Marcus Mariota, but like, I just don't know if that really makes sense. Um, the backup QB uh, pick tip correlation. Like if we ever seen that, like, I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, I don't get that. Okay. I found the Pat Fryermuth thing. I don't know. Can you see this? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're telling me this doesn't look like 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 a like a 50 year old at a bar in in Pennsylvania? Dude. It looks like he hasn't slept in a few days. I don't know. I don't know if I can show this, so I'm not going to do that. But yeah, I'm like I don't know. It might just be the angle, but I'm just like, brother, this man looks like he's ready to to do some some double teams on the edge against some defensive ends, not catch passes. So that I'm yeah. a little worried about that one to be completely honest, but uh I dig it. Yeah, man. It's uh it's gonna be wild with the QBs. I'm 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 so hyped for it to see to see how it happens. And I mean like the NFC North would be a juggernaut division with QBs if they get like May or McCarthy, and then you've got uh Caleb likely, unless they somehow mess that up, which wouldn't be too far for the Bears to do. But and then you know, I it runs through golf. You got to put the respect on Jared Goff's name. Like he's up there. It's great. I'm here for it as a Jared Goff fan. I Dude. love it, man. And you got Jordan Love. Like that's that's a fun division, man. Yeah, I mean, and we're we're talking about situations for quarterbacks, right? Like the Bears are are loading up uh, with weapon with Keenan. With they even signed Gerald Everett as a pass catching tight end. They got Swift. Um, uh, they have some money to throw around, like still, uh, if they need, want to sign somebody else on um, O line or what whatnot. So uh, it should be a fun fun division. I, I feel pretty good about the Lions, which is always a death knell, right? Like once you like the Lions are you never they they sneak up on you, right? But oh boy, uh, two years in a row, I'm not sure uh, if they can do it. But I do think I like how they're building their team. I think they've gotten some really underrated free agents this off season. Um, they signed DJ Reader to kind of stuff up the middle a little bit. Um, obviously, they, they they had the weird situation with Sutton, um, so maybe they maybe they target a cornerback in the draft um, or, or or sign a veteran. But 
I mean, their offense is right. If you have Ben Johnson, you have uh, Goff, like you're pretty set, especially with the weapons they have. And then Dude. defense, just just get a, like B league average ish. Yeah. Um, get a couple more playmakers that can make plays at the right times. And the NFC is not. Well, I don't know. I guess we don't necessarily know, but the NFC doesn't look super, super strong, right? It's kind of the 49ers, maybe the Cowboys. Maybe the I think Packers. there are a lot of really good teams, but I don't know that you've got a super team in the NFC, I feel like, other than the 49ers, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, obviously, there's there's a lot of variants that can go on, but it's like, I'll, I'll take it over the the Chiefs and the Bills and, right, like those those. Yeah powerhouses so there's a chance i mean whatever i'll hopefully i can uh i can make it to a lions game this year and and watch uh watch our watch our boys uh put in work so hell yeah man that'd be awesome i'm i'm hyped for uh, all the lions this year i think they're like uh, it's so cool that ben johnson came back because goff is just gonna sling it in that offense man like it's gonna be great um all right last thoughts before we head out um yeah steph Miller from Legendary Upside will be on <clears throat> on Friday um, to talk some some dynasty and then do a draft with me. We just hit 300 subscribers, so thanks everyone if you have subscribed. If you haven't, over like it's about 70% of people that that uh, watch uh, are not subscribed, so that definitely helps me out to uh, like and subscribe. And um, yeah, we will have uh, more big guests coming on throughout the off season. So we uh, really appreciate your support. And uh, shout out to El Coach, who will be starting up his channel here, uh, starting going into BBM season. So make sure uh, he will be on every Tuesday with me. But uh, once he gets started, uh, make sure and go give him your love as well. So have a great Tuesday night, everyone. And uh, we will see you on Friday. Thanks, guys. Oh, 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 oh,